Hey, 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 and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Tremor, and today we are going to continue with the Programming 101 series. I hope everyone is all right, and that you enjoyed the exercise in the last episode. And today we are going to talk about scope. So without any further ado, I'm going to put myself into the bottom right corner. And let's just jump straight in. So what is scope? If we talk about scope, we mean the visibility of something. Where is it visible? Where can I call it by its name? Where does the compiler know the entity? There are several types of scopes. Um, today we are going to talk about three of them, and those are global block and function scope. And if I talk about an entity today, I mean a variable, so I will just say variable from now on. Um, Scope also concerns with other things than variables, but today we will just talk about um, the visibility of variables throughout the program and how um, a scope influences that. So let's just start with the global scope. Global scope pretty much means it's visible in the, in the entire program. Some programming languages have, the, um, have some keywords to define variables with global scope, and it's mostly just global. Um, C++ does not know that. So we can just say, for example, integer um, var 1 equals 0, and that's fine. So this var 1 variable is visible inside the main function. We can just say int var 2 equals var 1, and that's fine. And we will see that it runs, but there's nothing happening because we didn't print anything to the console. But we can do that as well. And if we run this now, we should see we, we should see a two. Yeah. And just to show that that it's really like visible everywhere, we can define a function here as well. And we will see that we can address that var one inside this function as well. And it works. So you can see that um, this variable here was defined globally and you can see it anywhere in the program. Like it's visible in every function, everywhere. Next up is um, block scope. And block scope means that a variable is visible inside a block structure. Block structures we talked about already as well. Those are like control statements like if then else or a switch statement or a for loop. And in some programming languages, you can even define like unnamed blocks. For example, in C++, you can do that with opening and closing curly brackets. And this is a block now. If I define a variable inside this block, then we can address it in this block here. That's fine. So that works. Um, but outside of this block, the program does not know the variable. So if I define var5 here, and I want to give that the value of var4, we will see that the compiler doesn't know um, this variable here. And that also um, counts for, for example, a for loop. If I make a for loop and I create a variable um, called i. Now we don't even have to do anything here because we already defined that um, integer i here. And this is the block. So if I want to define, for example, like int var or int j and give that the value of i, that doesn't work because the i is not known outside of that for block. If I would define that i here, for example, now it's valid. The i is defined outside of the of the for block, and that's the reason why we can use it to give a value to j because it's not defined inside of that for block anymore. So let me just remove this here. The last scope is um, function scope, which is really just what the name already says. It causes variables to only be visible within the function from the return type until the closing curly brackets. If we uh, rename this here to var3, and now we want to like initialize var2, 
uh, that doesn't work because um, the variable is defined within the scope of the function and that means that we can only use it inside the inside the function so make it var5 here and give it a value of var3 that works so again everything that is um, defined within the function is only visible inside the function and to be honest um, that's it for today already scope is not a very complicated uh, concept but it's very important to understand or you will have massive problems to find out why some errors occur or why you have bugs in your code. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then um, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. And I wish you a nice week and see you next time. Bye bye.